Testing. All right, the mic seems to be working. Hello, everyone. I am just getting everything set up. If people want to chat, I'm making sure the chat's working. All right, mine is working. Hello, everyone. Great, and I think I think we're going to be able to see YouTube chats this time. Last time there was a problem. Nice. So, how's everyone doing? Oh, I'm real quiet. Is this any better? Hmm, okay. That's a little strange. Did I change my mic settings? Okay. Great. So, for those of you who don't know, this is the seventh fleet building AI tournament. Let me just get my OBS all set up. Okay. So this is the seventh Star Sector Fleet AI tournament where players have submitted fleets and they're going to be fighting it out in a mission. Um, why don't you announce it now, Vera? I think I'm going to be starting the real, the hype, the hype is real, starting the real thing in just a few seconds, maybe a minute or so. I just need to do one thing and put myself in streamer mode so that when people ping me, it doesn't show up on the feed. So this is the, I'm not giving anything away yet, this is the default fleets, and then I'll page right as soon as we really start. Okay. <laughs> I think it is time to start. So welcome one, welcome all to the seventh Star Sector PvP tournament, where players have submitted fleets and they'll duke it out under AI control. So this is round two. We had round one last week. We had eight fights, and the winners of those fights are now going to be fighting against some of the highest uh, seeded players. These are players who were winners or finalists in previous tournaments and veterans of the game. So let's get right to it. Yes, make sure I have the right camera controls. Well, oh, I'm sorry, Lightning. You're never a finalist. Well, Astralter thought you looked good. So Nides asks, is this bit tournament vanilla or with mods? It's just ship and weapon pack. So there is a little bit of modding, but not very much. Okay, let us move on to our first match. Our first match is SCC versus Johan. Let's take a look at the fleets. So SCCs is a brand new fleet. We have Dooms and Griffins, Tempests and Wolves. Let's take a look at this Doom. So the Doom has uh, a built-in mine system, the Mine Strike, that can be used while phase, which can make it a really annoying opponent. We have four Light Needlers on the front. That's burst kinetic damage that it'll be able to fire right when it leaves phase. Interesting! It has Salamanders. Normally you see either Reapers or Sabos. Oh, my overlay is still on. Well then. 
That was an oversight. Thank you. That's what I get for not checking everything. <laughs> well, I'm glad I have all of you watching. Okay, so we have this doom. It has salamanders and ion beams. It is a support doom. Support doom! Okay, Astralter just just started a call. Okay, I'm guessing that was my mistake or something. Okay, are we finally done with setups? We're finally done with setups. Hi, Call Pafford. How are you today? So, Kvegweirgear Kvegir asks, I started playing today. What the hell? There is PvP. So there is not PvP, but what we do is we do a tournament by having multiple players submit their fleets, and then we fight them against each other. Okay, this has been a bit rough start, but let's get back into it. So we have a support doom. We have a griffin, missile cruiser, support. I see harpoons, 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 and a trebuchet, LRM launcher. Now the trebuchet is interesting. It does a huge amount of EMP on a hit, and its arcs can pierce through shields if they have high flux. Hello! So we have a Doom with Salamanders and Ion Beams. We have a Griffin with Finisher Harpoons and Disabling Trebuchets. Let's see it. This has extreme modifications to get enough OP for all these miss missiles. Let's see. Another Doom. Same Doom. Another Griffin. Same Griffin. Alright, we have a Hunter Tempest. Let's see. Support. Annoyance Cruiser. Our Tempest has a Heavy Blaster, an Ion Cannon, Sabos. Hardened shields, extended shields. I really like extended shields on the Tempest. I think it saves a lot of problems. And hardened subsystems. So a lot of ion going on. A lot of ion. So three of those Tempests, and then some wolves. Yep, ion beams, advanced optics, and ECM. Okay, so these are giving some ECM defense. Ah, yes, and there was converted hangar on the Griffin. <laughs> I missed it. I didn't even look. These are Thunders. So Thunders are extremely long range, 8,000. Extremely fast, 450. Uh, so more Ions. They're armed with Ion Swarmers and Light Machine Guns. So they're kind of specialist, long range, generalist fighters. I think someone put it a while back. Okay, so more, more Salamanders and Ion. So this fleet has a ton of EMP. A ton of EMP and two Dooms. Facing them is Johan. Johan's fleet, let's see, we saw this last time, I think it's the same one, but I'm going to go go over it anyway. We have SO Hammerheads with a lot of kinetic damage, heavy machine gun, four light dual machine guns, um, assault chain gun for hull killing, yeah, okay, Johan hasn't changed anything. So there's this build, very successful, Atropos and assault chain gun for killing and anti-shield, and some pirate falcons. Sabos in front for anti-shield, Typhoon Reapers in back, and some Anthropos on the sides. Okay, yes, yeah, so and no changes. So four Falcon Peas, eight Hammerheads. Okay, I think we are ready to go for the first match, SCC versus Johan. Not going to screw up the camera controls this time. So here we have it. Wolves and Tempests leading the way. Dooms following quickly with their phase system. Griffin's coming up the rear. On the other side, a <laughs> clustered fleet of SO ships all bonking into each other. Now let's see. Yes, the AI has set capture points. Here comes the lone hammerhead. The lone ship that comes down. Oh, look how much look how much harassment it's getting. Oh, it's salamandered out. Its trebuchets are hitting. The mines aren't hitting it yet, but with its engines out, all it's going to take is a mine getting right in that engine, and it's going to be trouble. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at those mines. Oh, that is a hammerhead down already. All right, so that was the lead hammerhead. It got focused down, but now it's time for these other hammerheads to come in. It's in range. It's firing its kinetics. The shield was, was tested. It took some damage. Ooh, overloaded! Overloaded and killed by the Reapers! 
The Hammerhead started it, and two Falcon Peas finished it. Over here, another Hammerhead. He's locked down. But the Doom has gotten somewhat distracted by another Hammerhead. This one may... Yeah, I think it's going to survive, and then its engines are going to come back. Oh, those mines. Those mines! Oof! And Harpoon for the finish. But the other Griffin is in trouble. The other Griffin is overloaded. Will there be Reapers? Yes, there go the Reaper and Atropos. A lot of kills on both sides so far. Tempests with their Sabos have pushed back the Hammerhead, but no kill on that flank. Ooh, mines in the engines. It's, it's flamed out and there are mines behind it. It is going to survive, but barely. Look at that sliver of hole. Is the Thunder going to finish it? Is the Thunder going to finish I don't know if the Thunder's going to finish it. I think actually not. So, so far, these Dooms are killing with impunity. But we'll see. Oh, my goodness. Two Dooms. Now, if, if something pressures this Doom enough, it won't be able to survive. But so far, the Dooms are just... They're backing off, they're venting, they're laying their mines. Oh, Tempest down. Oh, his event. So the Hammerhead actually did shoot down that mine and saved the Falcon from a lot of damage. I have to say, the Ion, the Ion Dooms are working extremely well. Normally, Falcons could really harass, uh, could really harass Dooms and chase them down. But flamed out like this, they just don't really stand much of a chance. How about on this side? Ooh, this Doom is very high flux. It's very high flux. It might overload and eat missiles. Oh, I think this Doom might be trapped. Oh, yes, the Doom was trapped. Oh, and the Doom over here died, too. Both Dooms are down. That was a sudden, sudden reversal. I didn't even, I didn't even catch the other Doom dying. Probably the same thing, though. They just got pressed a little too hard, fluxed up, and then popped with those Reapers. Okay. Well, CR is going down on these Hammerheads. Oh. The Wolf is not fast enough to get away. Are we pressed up against the Map Edge? Not quite. Ooh, well, that turned around really fast. Those Dooms were getting kills left and right at the start of the match. Okay, I think that is round one. Nope, nope, there's still a wolf left, but let's be honest, I, I don't think it's going to survive. Yes, this wolf is the last force on the map. So we're going to speed up time a little bit, see how long it can kite. Oh! There's the Atropos for the kill. So, a very fast match where almost all these kills happened near the beginning with the Doom. And then the Dooms got pressed too hard and it was all over. So, that is round one SCC versus Johan. Victory goes to Johan. Next up is Vera versus Is Your Mojo Fly. So, let's look at Vera's victors. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Falcon Peas. I see one, two, three, four, five, six Omens, and seven Wasps. So, I, that, those must be converted hangers on these Falcons. So, our first Falcon Pea is a Light Strike Cruiser with Sabos, Harpoons, lasers and reapers, ECCM expanded missile packs, and hardened shields. Hi, Johan! Johan, you won! <laughs> um, harpoons! Yes! Now, let's see. This is a lot of sabos. It's a lot of harpoons. It's four reapers each. And an anonymous person told me to check the weapon loadouts, and we have linked missiles. So the Sabos, the Harpoons, and the Reapers are in their own linked groups, which means that they're going to be firing these missiles like crazy. 
Now, next, ah, here's the converted hanger. So we have converted hanger, wasp, we have sabos, harpoons, and PDs. Ah, so it's, okay, it has converted hanger instead of hardened shields. Okay. So same deal, lots of missiles, linked missiles, and yes, it looks like these other ones are the same variant. So lots of missiles, wasps. Now let's take a look at these omens. Yes! Yes! I love this omen! So, these omens have an antimatter blaster and a reaper. Hardened subsystems, unstable injector, hardened shields, resistant flux conduit, and max capacitors. <laughs> yes! I made this. I made something very, very similar to this last tournament, and Vera and I worked together last tournament. Um... I think you improved upon it. I don't think I had max max caps on mine. Uh, so this is this is a very very dangerous omen in that if the shields go down, not only does it completely disable you, but then it hits you with antimatter blasters and reapers. Now let's see. Is there any difference between these omens? One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. All the same omens. So wait a minute. There are. No, these antimatter blasters are the only hard flux guns in the entire fleet. There's no, there's no pulse lasers. There's no kinetics. There's no ballistics. It's all limited ammo. Okay, we'll see how that works. <laughs> Up against them is is your mojo fly. Oh, I'm 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 sorry to hear that the stream resolution is bad. I'm streaming it at 1080. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Let's see. So here we have, I think this is the same variance as last time. It's Sabos, assault chain guns, heavy blaster with safety overrides. So a lot of DPS here. This could chew through holes really, really quickly. And the Sabos can get the overloads. And last time, these worked really well. So let's see. Yeah. One, two, three, four of these vultures. Uh, same, same Punisher as last time, Assault Chain Guns, Heavy Needler, which is a little strange with SO, but hey, it worked, and Sabos, some SO Hammerheads, I think these might be new, these might be new, so we have Assault Chain Guns, Reapers, and Rail Guns, no rear PD, but Hardened Shields and Safety Overrides, we have the Claw cal Carriers, and two more of those Hammerheads, Okay, so lots of falcon peas, wasps, and omens versus vultures, punishers, hammerheads, and a drover. Let us fight Vera versus Izzer Mojo Fly. So those wasps are taking the lead, the omens are on the side, the falcons are a little confused at times. Over here, the Punisher is using their ship system to dart forward. Vultures have their own drones, and a little bit of confusion in the ranks. Now here comes this, here comes this lone hammerhead. Ah, it's got some, it's got some support, it's backing off, cool. So it's not going to get hit by itself, but here we have the battle is commencing. Sabos are flying on both sides. The wasps are laying down these mines. We'll see if they can intercept some of these missiles. Ooh, ooh, harpoons are already flying. There's an overload. We have one overload. Oh, Punisher down on the left. Punisher down. Harpoons are flying. Oh, look at so many harpoons. That's another vulture down. Another overload. Another set of harpoons are flying. Another overload. Oh, this is just, this is just brutal. There's an overload over here. These harpoons are just getting the finish on all the overlap. Here's a reaper from the omen and then more harpoons. Oh, this is a slaughter. Oh, and there's that one. And there's eight harpoons coming from those linked missiles. So not enough harpoons for the kill right then, but there's another volley to finish it up. Oh, omen down. There's an omen down. So that's a kill. Oh. All right, so here's this vulture. It's getting harassed by an omen. 
it has harpoons coming in, but look how high its flux is. Now, it doesn't have any... Oh, it needs to fire its sabos. If it fires its sabos, it can probably get a kill. Ah, uh, it's not firing its sabos. Oh, so this... I, oh, and there's the, there's the omen from the behind. Oh, there's the sabos! But the guns are disabled from the other omen. I think one omen went down, although I didn't see it on camera. Now, is this it? Yes, this is it. So that was just just brutal. Those missiles. So I have to say that the harpoons are proving a lot more deadly than the typhoon reapers. <laughs> all those all those mines went off at once, because the harpoons they just ah. Even if a ship retreats, the harpoons just chase him down for the kill. Now this oh never mind. Vera, Vera, th this is a monster fleet. Monster fleet. Is your Mojo Fly does not have a weak fleet, but that was just brutal. Okay, moving on to the next match. Next, na next match is Lightning JC versus Paul Coffart. Let's see. Ooh, Cathedral class, nope to you, hubship. We have a Cathedral versus a victory. Battle of the Capitals. All right, let's take a look at Lightning JC's fleet. We have Kite. Kite with four Reapers and a light autocannon. You know, this thing is only two deployment points, and it's got four Reapers. That, you know, if it even sinks a single Reaper in, that is going to be worth it. Okay, and we have the Cathedral. For those who don't know, the Cathedral is a Ludic Path, Ludic Church ship from Ship and Weapon Pack, and it is a mobile station. So let's see, the central module has some Perdition Wings. Perdition Wings, HVDs, the Redeemer built-in Merv LRM, and some point defense and expanded deck crew. Let's take a look at the modules. So we have our top module has a makeshift shield generator. Okay, so it's gonna have shields some Mark Nines and Hurricane Mervs. Hurricane Mervs have been very good this tournament so far, as long as they're targeting ships and not fighters. But the side, oh yes, oh, they're not identical. They're not identical. They are identical. Okay, we have makeshift shield generator, so there's shields on all these. Railgun, Vulcan, Salamander, Broadsword. The side module has Harpoons, Mauler and HVD, so we've got some Ballistic and HE combo there. More shields. Back module has flat cannons, some HVDs, salamanders, and no shields in the back. But we do have heavy armor and insulated engine assembly. And it looks like it's it looks like it's uh it's symmetric. So this is a well. Let me go back to the hub. This is a hundred DP ship. So this is a hundred of the hundred fifty deployment points of the tournament is all in this ship. We'll see how it does. We have some enforcers. These are SO enforcers with heavy machine guns, assault chain guns, so lots of kinetic, lots of SHE, some sabos for shield overloading, some hammer class torpedoes, and flax for defense with a good amount of fence and capacitors. So these are going to be fast. They're going to hit hard. And we have a non-SO enforcer, standoff enforcer, ITU, armored weapon mounts. Let's see, only two small missiles. But we have long range HVD and heavy mauler. So this will be 1200 range on this enforcer. All right, we have some Ludic Church Latchers, which are identical to normal Lashers, only with a fancy paint job. And what do we have? Reinforced Bulkhead. We have Sabos, Vulcans, Light Assault Guns, and Light Dual Auto Cannons. So we have the Overload, we have some Kill. And a different variant, Lud's Hammer. So this is an SO1. So light assault guns, single machine guns, and hammers. This is going to be extremely fast with SO. 170 plus the 50 no-speed bonus is going to be 220 combat speed. All right, so there's another Lud's Hammer, another Lashing, another Lashing, another Lashing, Lud's Hammer, and finish it off for a glory to Lud Kite. So we have the Cathedral, two Kites, two Enforcers, and eight, eight, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... <laughs> a bunch of angry cu cucumbers. Seven 
last year's. Now on to Cofort's, Co Paul Cofort's fleet, the Cofort Accord fleet. Is this the same as last time? I think some of the ships are. Let's go over it real quick. Here is the Victory. This is a Victory that is absolutely covered in Burst PD. Aegis is in the back. Hellbore is in the back. Four HVDs, two Heavy Needlers, and the built-in Ballistic Long Range Cannons. And ITU. Let's see. Paul says, yes, it is the same. Okay. So, very quick. Here is the Infernal Launcher with Falk Super Interceptors. These Heavy Needler Hammerheads, two of those. Hill Laser Support, that's Hill and Gravitons. And Ion Omens. And, ah, oh, a couple, oh, oh. Did I, did I click on the hull mods? I did click on the hull mods. Well, I'm glad that this is how, I'm glad that now I know about this. All right. So, we have two Ion Omens and two Defense Omens. Okay. Let us fight. We have Cathedral versus Victory. <laughs> so the first the first fight was a victory for Johan. There have been no onslaughts. All right, so here come the Lashers, the SO Lashers and the SO Enforcer are up top. And come in to greet them, Destroyers and Frigates. Omen versus Lasher, first combat of this match. The Cathedral is a just a big multi-module ship. It's a mobile station. It is enormous. It is also 100 deployment points. It is the biggest capital available in this tourney. Ooh, those interceptors. Interceptors plus omen has disabled <laughs> one lasher. Now, you, just, you, see, you heard those sound effects? Those were mines. The cathedral has a mine layer on it. Luckily, the interceptors and the omens are pretty good at dealing with mines. Most of those rockets blocked by the corpse of its allies. Oh, Omen, Omen down, Omen down. That was probably either a mine or a big missile. Ooh, but this, oh, this Enforcer, this Enforcer is getting hit, oh, by a Victory and two long range Sunders. It didn't stand a chance. Now Victory in the Cathedral getting close. Ooh, these Sunders are sticking together. They're very effective sticking together. Hammerhead coming in. Dual heavy needlers. Didn't get an overload, but it really dro drove up the flux. The victory is attacking. Here we go. Battle of the capitals. So, you can see that there's these layered shields being caused by the makeshift shield, makeshift shield emitters on each module. Now, the, vol the victory is backing off. It's not really pressing. Oh, but it is, it is landing some hits. Not much, but it's landing hits. And are any of those missiles going to make it through? No, none of the missiles made it through. So what's up with these shields is that the hub has a shield, and then the modules have makeshift shield emitter hull mod installed. So they have, uh, they have doubled up on the shield emitters. So it looks like we have a standoff here. The, the cathedral is too slow, really, to approach, and all these other ships are too scared. And for good reason. This cathedral has a ton of firepower. Over here, we have a monitor that is tangling with a lasher. And not much really going on. Um, the, la the, the monitor's flux is slowly raising, but it has the flux shunt hull mod, which means that it's also going to go down. Oh, oh, mines, mines! That was a terrible vent! Oh, why did the monitor vent? The monitor just didn't know. It didn't know about the mine system. The monitor killed itself with that vent. How are things going with the rest of the fighting? Not too much action. There's kind of just battle lines. Yeah, the victory the victory just refuses to close. The cathedral can't chase. But these burst PD are also stopping the missiles being launched by the cathedral cold.
Let's see. Are we going to have an impact? We are, and it did some damage, but no uh, no hull damage, just shield damage. Over here, again, a monitor. So really, we just have battle lines uh, facing off kind of a lack of aggression. Um, yeah, this might... Well, at some point, the tournament's... Um, the tournament's high aggression mode will kick in. But I think we may have a stalemate until that happens. More mines. More mines attacking the omen. Is the victory going to close in? Oh, and an omen down. So I'm just going to call it... Uh, not call it, but I'm just going to say it right now. The AI is not aware of the mines of the mine system on this ship. It's not correctly identifying the threat, like it does with Dooms. I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, not sure why, but the AI is taking unnecessary losses from this ship system. It really shouldn't have lost that omen. It shouldn't have lost the Doom. Ooh, here we have the Sunders working together. When the Sunders working together, a frigate just cannot stand up. That is going to be a quick kill. Let's see. <laughs> so this is... The cathedral is just... Uh, yeah. So this is a very relaxing fight. For us to watch. Oh, here comes a Sunder on an attack run. But it doesn't do hard flux. We really need the victory to move in an open fire, and it does. So, here come some harpoons inbound. Are any of them going to hit? I think one of them hit, but it, uh, but this is a damper field, so really very little damage there. So I note in general. This, this match is deploying some AI problems when fighting stations. Um, there really was a very large lack of aggression on this part, and the mines are getting kills when they shouldn't. Ooh, the kites! The kites with the overload! Those reapers get the job done! So I legitimately think if this... If this victory actually attacked, I think it could beat the station. But it's um it simply has not. Alright, here's the other Sunder. The Gravitons are overcoming its shield emitter. Yes, these this this ship just can't stand against the hill sunder. Okay, very few ships left. This is a very, very even fight. We have a victory, a heron, and three destroyers versus the cathedral and a lasher. The lasher CR is getting quite low. It's not going to last much longer. Um, all these ships need to do is attack. If they attacked, then I think it would be a victory. We'll see. Now, the burst PD on this victory is enough to defeat the mines. I've noticed that, well, maybe maybe this one shot on the side might have been a mine. Here are the midline's very wide shield arc saves it from mines on either side. And there's the hill. The hill gets the kill. All right, so now we just have the system, or just have the cathedral left. Now it has a lot of kinetic damage. It has four HVDs and two heavy needlers. So far, the cathedral offensively can't really scratch the victory. Um, but the victory is just not pushing the advantage. There's the timeout. So we have reached timeout. Aggression is set to maximum. And the victory is moving in. The hammerhead is moving in. The hammerhead is overloaded. 
<laughs> the hammerhead is overloaded. There go the missiles. The hammerhead is down. However, ooh, HE rounds are hitting. The flux of the cathedral is now quite high. Quite high flux. It's taking damage. The debris from the hammerhead is absorbing a lot of fire. Ooh, this front module. This front module is taking a lot of damage. It's really amazing that these missiles weren't being launched before. Let's see what is going to happen. All right, so all the destroyers have died. It is simply victory with a bomber versus cathedral. Now, if, if, you know, if, if these ships had pressed the advantage before, I think this would have been a victory for them. But now, I'm not so sure. It's a lot of missile firepower. Oh, there's a module down, though. There is a module down. It looks like the, the victory is backing off, and it has been shielded. It's been shielded by the debris from that module. Ooh, it's impacting the central module. The AI needs to attack the central module. I think that will get a kill. Hellbores are doing a good job. HVDs are doing a good job. Now, as crazy as it sounds, the victory has the speed advantage, so it can control the range in this engagement. Oh, that's another module down. I think the victory has, has this. It was taking he pretty heavy damage. But now it's just picking off the modules one by one. Its CR is still full. It has enough burst PD to take out the mines. Well, this has been a very, a very slow fight. Very tactical. However, I think the victory is just too strong a head-on opponent for this cathedral to take. It needed some support to take it out. Oh, the central module. Central module's in trouble. Oh, it's overloaded. Hellbore round's coming in, and that's the kill. So, a very, very close fight. Only the frontal firepower might of this victory saw it through. <laughs> All right. So, Paul Coffart advances to the next round. Next up, we have Kissimmees. Kissimmees versus, and I figured out, it's no pointer exception. So Kissimmees versus no pointer exception. Kissimmees is bringing a paragon to the battle. Let's see, I see a paragon. I see albatross, bulwark destroyers. I see omens versus high-tech, best-tech. We have the... Apogees from last time, and an omen! Okay. So, let's look at the variants. So Kissimmees has... Paragon with Tachyon Lances, Autopulse Lasers, Ooh, some Antimatter Blasters up front, that's interesting, Ion Beams, and Heavy Needlers, with some Burst PDs around, and Hammer Torpedoes! Alright, so it has, it has eight shots of hammers. Expanded magazines for the autopulse and the antimatter blaster, advanced optics for the tachyons, stabilized shields, flux distributor, hardened shields. With the advanced targeting core and the advanced optics, these tachyon lances are going to have extreme range. Next up, we have the albatross. So the albatrosses are very tough destroyers with built in flak drones. We have heavy audio cannon and heavy mortar, so we have kinetic HE combo with some annihilators on the front. ITU, Reinforced Whirlkid, and Heavy Armor. And Blast Doors built in. Let's see, are these all the same? These are all the same. Next up, we have the Smite class Omen. What are those weapon arcs? I mean, they face forward. It's not bad. We have Hammer Torpedo, Iron Pulse Laser, and Burst PD 
with expanded missile racks, hardened subsystems. So each one is going to have four hammer torpedoes. That's a pretty good spike. And let's see, any difference? No, they're all the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight omens. Two, three, four, five, six albatrosses and a paragon. Up against, let's see, is this the same fleet we saw last time? This looks like the same, yes. So, Plasma Cannon and Locust with Expanded Missile Racks, Stabilized Shields, and ITU. Four of those attack cruisers, then four support cruisers with high intensity lasers with some tax squalls and Expanded Missile Racks. Yes, so four and four, same as last time. And an Omen! Hi, Omen! We have Burst PD Lasers and Sabo SRMs, Hardened Shields, Hardened Subsystems, and a Nav Relay. And let me just do a quick reset, just in case I open something. All right. Let us begin our fight. Kissimmee's versus Null Pointer Exception. Will the Apogees prevail? <laughs> yes, the, the, the Omen is just new. So last time they were actually under deployment cost. All right, so the Omens are charging ahead. And the Omen is charging ahead. One versus eight. Now, the Apogees have formed a nice battle line, although they're very confused. They're talking to each other, just making sure each other are okay. They only have eyes on the front. And here come the missiles. So Squall and Locust both firing at this lone Omen. Two Squalls. Oh, it's taking Plasma Cannon hits. Oh, this omen, this omen does not necessarily want to be here. But on the other hand, it has peeled off three Apogees from the group. Oh, nope, it's dead. All right. The Paragon is in firing range, but it's being blocked by this destroyer. And there it goes. How much damage is Paragon going to do? Some. Let's see, another omen. Another omen is taking heavy damage. Let's focus on this Paragon fight, though. Let's see what it can do against this Apogee. Ooh! Well, it's through the shields. EMP'd out. But the Apogee has taken damage, but it looks like it's gotten away. The Paragon moves in to attack another victim. This time it's much closer. It's much closer. Ooh, shields are down. Shields are down. There goes a hammer. Is the Paragon going to finish off its prey? Yes! That's one Apogee down. One Apogee down, and this other Omen, its flux is high. Its flux is high. Are those tacking lances going to hit? They are. Oh, it's just brutal. And there goes the hammer. Yes, and it's two Apogees down. On this side, we have three Omens ganging up on an Apogee, and the Apogee shields are really high. It took a hammer to the side. So this Apogee is actually being beaten back by these three omens. Locust is strong enough to force back an omen. Oh, another Apogee down. Oh, these, these Apogees just cannot scratch this Paragon. This Paragon is too powerful when it faces them one on one like this. These omens have surrounded... Oh, another hammer hit. Now here's the downfall of these Apogees. In a battle line, they're powerful, but individually, they're just a little too slow. Let's see, how is this, Ap how is this Albatross doing? The Albatross is backing off. It can't really happen. Oh, and over here, the support, the Squall is driving up the shields. The hill, the hill gets the kill. Oh, we have an overload. This Apogee is overloaded, but... I don't see any follow-up. There's no harpoons in this fleet. Ooh, it looks... A couple strikes got through the shield. There goes the tachyon beams. This Apogee is going in for a kill against the Arbitro Albatross. It's two, two Apogees com combining. But they're also getting dangerously close to the Paragon. They're probably going to get the kill, but I don't know if they can survive after getting that kill. Ooh, another hammer. The hammers have been very solid on this Paragon. Yes, the Apogees have gotten too close to the Paragon, and they're going to pay for it. 
Ooh, and this apogee, this apogee, the ion beams and the omens have have taken out its engines. It's just drifting. Frontal shields. Currently, the Paragon is being blocked, but that is not a good sign. Not a good sign for front shielded ship to have all its ships behind it. Yes, and that'll be a kill. This is not looking, not looking that good. Let's see, we have two omens kind of kiting these apogees. Not really doing much damage, but they're keeping them occupied. They're draining the locusts. I mean, the locusts can very well pop these omens. If this gets hit by a few plasma cannons and then a, and then a locust round, it could be in trouble. Luckily, its EMP system helps. The Paragon has gotten close again. Ooh, there goes those auto pulses. Very flux efficient. And the Lance is for the kill. On this side, we have two destroyers and two frigates ganging up on this Apogee. Not a huge amount of firepower, but the Apogee is flamed out. It really just has no answer. Well, we had some we had some omens got overwhelmed earlier by like two squalls and a locust and a plasma cannon. But it's a bit of an extreme case. All right, so we have seen tremendous success for the Apogees in round one, but in round two, they just had no answer for the force, char force concentration of this Paragon. The, just whenever they got in range of the Paragon, the Paragon killed them, and they were not fast enough to get away. Very solid ships, but just, uh, yeah, just couldn't stand up to that Paragon. Here we have um, really unfair. It's a... Uh, Four omens on the map edge, fighting one omen. Let's just end this misery. Yes, and there it goes. So there you have it. Not a shame. There were several kills, but this paragon was the star of the show. All right, next fight. Next fight will be Dauntless versus Symbols <laughs> with crack shipping. <laughs> Damn it, Symbols. Let's take a look at Dauntless's fleet. We have a Conquest. This is an interesting Conquest. So we have ITU and Flux Distributor going for, so for maximum Flux. This is an asymmetric loadout. We have Locusts, Aegis, Devastator, and Flat Cannons on one side. So one side is extremely defensive. We have a ring of LRPD lasers. We have Sabos and Locusts. And on the killing side, we have a Storm Needler for lots of kinetic DPS and a Hellbore. Now, the Storm Needlers are good. They're, 700, um, they're 750 DPS, but they're only 700 range. So we will see how this conquest does. Next up, we have some Herons. So Wasp, Gladius, Falx. So this is an Interceptor Squadron Heron with ITU and Heavy Burst Lasers. So this is going to be able to lay down a very large PD net around it. Is Heron's the same? We have very popular, very popular, this Sunder build. It really gets, it really does get the job done. Only, let's see, we have Gravitons on Hill, and for missiles, we have Harpoons, and just some LMGs and Vulcan for defense. So no Railguns on this, no Sabos. Another Sunder, and then we have Hammerheads. Oh, interesting. So we have a Hammerhead, ITU, Gunnery Control AI, two Arbalists, Light Dual Auto Cannons, and Ion Cannons, and Reapers. Huh. This is a interesting Hammerhead variant. I don't... I don't... Huh. I don't really consider Arbalists very good weapons, but we'll see how it does. All right, so we have Arbalists, Hammerheads. One, two, three, four... An Ion Beam Wolf, Ion Beam, some PD, some Harpoons. Ah, okay, so we've expanded Missile Racks for extra Harpoons, Advanced Optics. So this is going to be a very long-range Ion. <laughs> and a Dauntless Hound. Again, Arbalist. All right, and facing them is 
Crack shipping. Crack shipping. High crack shipping. Not only is it converted, it's converted um, freighter ships, but they're all named after fan fiction pairings, and it's a good fleet. It, it did extremely well round one. Now let's see. Are we going to get um? Are we going to get any changes? I see the Han Londo. I see the Kirk Spock, the Snape Dumbledore, Harry Draco. I think this is the same fleet. This looks like the same fleet. So let's just take a quick tour. We have Nautilus freighters with lances. We have Circes, and Circes are great with beam spam. So Circes are quite fast at 90, <laughs> 90 speed and plasma jets. They are faster than most destroyers with cruiser range. So this is truly a kiting beam ship. We have um, some interceptors. Some Thunders. We have the Holmes Watson with its dagger torpedo monitors and extreme modifications to fit it in. And the star of the show, C-3PO R2-D2 Droid Love with Gauss Cannons, Hurricane Mervs, uh, ITU, Gunnery Control, Shield Bypass, Advanced Weapon, Advanced Turret Gyros, and Armored Weapon Mounts. And this has Accelerated Ammo Feeder, so these Gauss Cannons can fire very rapidly. All right, and another Snape Dumbledore. Yes, so that is the fleet. We have the same fleet from last time. We've converted ships versus Asymmetric Conquest, some Guardian Herons, Hill Support, and Arbalist Destroyers. Let us fight. So on this side... We have Conquest keeping up with the fleet. We have a couple frigates and the destroyers falling in formation. For symbols and crack shipping, we have these combat carriers, converted freighters and one condor, forming a nice little carrier ball. We have the ultra-fast, ultra-long-range Circes diving forward. Ooh, this Circe, here's the thing. With this, with this setup, a single ship does drive ahead, but... This Circe is faster. Is it faster than these Hammerheads? It's the same speed. The Circe is the same speed as the Hammerheads, but they have a mobility system and they're longer range. We're going to see how that plays out. So, a lot of beam flux, beam spam. The Conquest is moving up, though. Now, the Conquest has ITU. Can the Conquest catch these Circes? Now, there go the Locusts. Ooh, on this side, oh, the Circes, the Circes outrange and outspeed the Hammerheads. Ah, the Hammerheads just got nothing they can do. It managed to survive, but very, very damaged. On this, sea, this side, the Arbalists have forced the Nautilus back. And let's take a look at the Conquest. The Conquest is under fire from two Circes from the side and the extreme long range of these Gauss Cannons. So the Gauss Cannons are impacting. It's fluxed up. It's in firing range, but it's firing at fighters. You know, I think these beams actually outrange the Conquest. Now this is an asymmetric loadout, so its right side can't do anything. Its left side is disabled. This Conquest is completely shut down. Completely shut down, it can do nothing. Oof, and here comes here comes the daggers. Not quite the kill. Here come the harpoons. I think the beams got the kill. So these Circes outrange and outspeed all opponents. Beams are fine. I think these Circes are bit overpowered. K kudos to Symbols for making such an amazing variant, but these only cost 12, and they are fast destroyer speed. Oops, let me just get the camera back. They are fast destroyer speed with cruiser range. Well, Circes aren't overpowered in general, but in this matchup, Circes are overpowered. Ooh, Hammerhead's down. 
That's true. You're right. Outside of a tournament setup, they're not very overpowered. But in this case, I the Circes, aha, the Sunder can fire back at the Circes. Actually, no. The Circes outrange the Sunders. They outrange and they outspeed the Sunders. The Sunders are helpless against the Circes. Yes. So unfortunately, unfortunately for this fleet, they are just going to get ground down. Oh, oh, it was an overload, and there are the Atropos. So I don't think, I think that these sorceries have vulnerabilities, but it's not, not my place to say what they are. This variant would work well as a support ship, because this is all AI. It would work well as a support ship, but you have to be careful. If beams can't overwhelm their enemy, then they do no hard flux. In this case, the hammerhead is helpless. Two of them are focusing it. Now, a Medusa, a beam Medusa, fills a very similar role as these Circes. It's a little faster, but it has much less hull and armor. And not to mention that the Circe is also a good out-of-combat ship. You're right. The, I think a, I think a Medusa is a little a little few deployment little fewer deployment points than these Circes. But a Medusa has two medium mounts and two universals and a bunch of smalls, so it could mount some railguns. But in general, the firepower is actually very similar between a Circe and a Medusa. But the, but the Circe is a little slower because it doesn't have the teleporter, but it is uh, much longer ranged, being a cruiser instead of a um, destroyer. Yes, I agree. I think, um, I think some of the SO variants we've seen so far... Oh, no, I'm not allowed to say this. I should not be giving anyone advice. Let's just watch the fight. Let's watch these pretty beams. These Circes dancing around their opponents. Oh, and there goes the Sunder. So a very different style for this winning fleet than some of our other winning fleets. Some fleets are extremely high offense. But this fleet, it just outranges and grinds its enemy down with, of course, the MVP capital. The Atlas Mark II. And there we go. Atlas Mark II with the kill with its Gauss cannons. Slowly but surely, the predators circle their prey, waiting to strike. Yes, this Atlas has shield bypass. All right, one Nautilus down, but that is the fight. Symbols advances to another round. Next up, we have Dizzy. Dizzy versus Soup. This should make Pathos happy. We have an Odyssey versus an Onslaught. So let us take a look at these fleets. We have a Odyssey. Interesting, the Odyssey only has one fighter in it. Ah, that's because all the other fighter wings are taken up later. But we have a Wasp Interceptors. We have a Tachyon Lance and a Hill on the broadside. We have a Locust on the side with three Sabos. Expanded Missile Racks, ITU, Resistant Flux Conduit. 22 vents, that's very interesting. And 30 caps. And let's see, we have IR Pulses. And LRPD lasers. And an ion cannon on front. An ion cannon for the disable. So we have kinetic bursts from the missiles. We have long-range killing power with the high-intensity laser and the tachyon beam. And we have anti-fighter from the Locus SRM. Next up, we have some Arachne-class destroyers. This is a ship and weapon pack um, ship that has advanced targeting core. So this is a destroyer with plus 100% range. So it's like a very small, not particularly tough, 
mini Paragon. We have an Ion Beam, so that's going to be a 2,000 range Ion Beam, and a Heavy Blaster, so 1,200 Heavy Blaster. And some PD lasers for defense, max vents, and a whole bunch of caps. Aha! And this destroyer, this Arachne, is different. This has an ion beam and a lightning gun. So this is going to be purely 2,000 range. 2,000 range. But they are slow. It's only 60 speed, and we'll see what that does. Next up, another variant. This one has the heavy ion blaster, which can really shut down a ship. And ion beam again for 2,000 range. So there's a lot of ion, ion happening here. Okay, here's another Ion Blaster. Another punch with a Heavy Blaster. And we're into some Vortex Carriers. So Vortex Carriers, ship and weapon pack, with a time acceleration field that can make the ship zip around and also its fighters go insanely quick. So these Kopeshes are going to be able to launch a very, very fast strike. We have ECCM for its harpoons and expanded deck crew with a uh, little bit of hard flux, a little bit of poke, and two LRPDs for defense. Same variant? Yes. Same variant? Same variant. So three vortexes for six Kopesh wings. Now we have some omens. Let's see, this is a different omen? Yes, this is a different omen. The obvious class frigate with tactical laser, so long range poke, PD laser, a salamander. So the salamander is going to have infinite ammo with ECCM package, so it's going to be a very tricky salamander. Hardened shields, hardened subsystems, unstable injector, and max caps. So these will be quite tough while packing quite a bit of support. So, one Odyssey. One, two, three, four, five, five Arachnes, long range, three carriers, three omens. Versus Soups, Kierkegaard's Robust Clowns. Now let's see, is there any... I'm just going to reset just in case because I've been looking at stuff. And, yes, Vera, I agree. Any Every omen that's not a spiker omen is subpar. <laughs> okay, so we have an onslaught and a slightly non-traditional build here in that it's almost all forward-facing. We have three heavy needlers up front. That's going to give us 750 kinetic DPS, and those mounts can converge. We have a Mjolnir cannon, not very flux efficient, but a good puncher for hull. We have... Two Flare Burst Launchers! This has Flare Burst Launchers! We have two Sabos. Oh my goodness, it has Shield Bypass. Oh, it has Shield Bypass and it's running up against a Tachyon Lance. Well, we'll see how it goes. Resistant Flux Conduit, Flux Distributor, ITU, Armored Weapon Mounts, Automated Repair Unit, that's actually going to help. Reduces the combat time to disable repaired... Um, to repair disabled... <laughs> um, stuff. Gunnery Control AI, Heavy Armor, Insulated Engine Assemblies, 50 Vents. This actually has a lot of flux. This is a crazy, crazy uh, onslaught. Next up we have, yes, the Enforcer Ludic Paths with built-in safety overrides and ill-advised modifications. This is the same one as last time, I believe, with three Plasma Flamers and some Light Duel Machine Guns. Now, the Plasma Flamers are going to benefit from the expanded magazines. We also have Sabos and Swarmers with Expanded Missile Launchers. And ECCM Package, that's going to help both of these missiles. <laughs> Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of those. And we have some Tempests. So we have Yorick Class, Kefka Class, Yorick Class Tempests, Auxiliary Thrusters, Safety Overrides, two Pulse Lasers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. So, we have... We have Odyssey with long range and fighters versus Shield Bypass Onslaught and um, these Flamer Enforcers and Tempest. So let us do this fight. Oops, I almost did the wrong camera mode again, but here we go. Here come the high tech ships. Odyssey leading the way with its high speed. Arachne is on the flanks, and Vortex is falling behind. Versus. Tempests are coming up first. There's that lone Tempest going forward. I think it's that capture order. Oh, that lone test and Tempest is going to be in trouble. And the Enforcer is falling behind. Let's see, is this Tempest going to pop? 
Mm, it's not being surrounded too... B oh, oh, that's those 2,000 range iron beams. But the extended shields... Oh, no, no, it is dead. However, the Odyssey, the Odyssey has been rushed. We will see whether these enforcers can break this battle line. Now, these Arachnids are supposed to fight at 2,000, 2000 range. Oh, it's not going to fight very well at, at 100 range. Oh, yes. That is not going to go well. That one Arachne down. We have an overload. We have an overload on this enforcer. With some harpoons are inbound. And the Tachyon Lance. Yes, that is the kill. That is one enforcer down. Ooh, look at these, look at these bowling balls. Where's the onslaught? The onslaught's not burn driving. The onslaught needs to burn drive. Oh, open class down. Oh, and we have a vortex. We have vortexes that are exposed. We have a tempest, two tempests attacking it. Is the vortex going to be able to survive, that survive this? There is an enforcer coming in. If that enforcer cat attacks that fluxed up vortex, it's not going to go well. There's another arachne down over there. The onslaught with no shields. Onslaught with no shields is not doing well against the Tygian Lance. Oh, it looks like a tempest might have gotten ki killed by that by that death explosion. This Odyssey is getting a little bit swarmed, but so far it's doing well. Now this Arachne is very high flux. The Onslaught is slowly, slowly moving in. It needs to fire its guns. It hasn't, it hasn't fired yet. All right, the Onslaught is firing its guns a little bit and hitting its ally. Go Onslaught, go! Ooh, Arachne disabled. Now, this Odyssey, this Odyssey is doing some good, but it simply cannot night fight these multiple destroyers and multiple frigates at the same time. It's being disabled, it's being swarmed. This Odyssey is not long for this world. And... Yes, the Odyssey is down. If this Odyssey, if this Onslaught were simply to press the F button, it could crush this entire fleet in one round, but it's not going to. Hey, the Onslaught fired a little bit, and it hit an Enforcer. So we do have a small battle line here. We have Arachnes, we have Vortexes. But it's probably... Oh no, are these, are these... Are these enforcers set on escort? The enforcers need to need to attack. Is this onslaught? I I want to look at the fleet files later and see if this onslaught is reckless I or, I or not. Now this onslaught has no point defense and no shield, so it is extremely vulnerable to these carriers. However, <laughs> it's simply um. There are good Onslaught builds. We just haven't seen any yet. Uh, so I think that these Tempests and these Enforcers, though, are too much. Oh, oh, look at that! Look at that! The Onslaught has fired! The Onslaught has fired at the Arachne! It did a quite a bit of damage. <laughs> yes, if the, if the Onslaught had burn drived into the... It would have done quite well because it has lots of firepower, but um, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. There we go. There's the fight. So these enforcers and tempests were simply too much for these long-range ships to handle. These ships just flew right through the range and uh, just overwhelmed their opponents. All right, we have Wikifish versus Safari John. Last fight of the match. We have one last match in this time, and they've been going faster. We have the Woeful Folly. Let's take a look at Wikifish's fleet. We have an Astral. One, two, three, four, five, six longbow wings for a massive kinetic punch. Two locusts for anti-fighter, and an ion beam. Very few guns. Expanded missile racks and ECCM. All right. 
Buffalo Mark Twos. Buffalo Mark Twos. With Sabos and Typhoon Reacher, Expanded Missile Rocks, and ECCM. And a Railgun. So two of those. We have some monitors with Contender Cannons, two Flax, Accelerated Shields, and Auxiliary Thrusters. All right, so this is a monitor that has a hole in the back. It only has 300 degree shields. Next up, we have Rip Frigates. With Auxiliary Thrusters, Flux Coil Adjunct, Harden Shields, and some Reapers. All right, so we have some HE, we have some Kinetic, we have some Reapers. We have some Punisher class Destroyers with two proximity, um, two proximity charges. So that's uh, AOE against fighters. A heavy Mauler and Heavy Autocannon with an absolute swarm of Reliant HMGs. Auxiliary Thrusters, ITU, lots of vents and caps. And two of those. And a Griffin. What's this Griffin? This Griffin has a hammer, two Sabos mediums, two Sabos smalls, an ion torpedo, and an HVD. Max caps, decent amount of vents. Another of these monitors. We have an Annoyance class <laughs> frigate for the Vigilance with Salamander Pod. So Salamander Pod plus fast missile racks. There's going to be a lot of Salamanders. It has ECM and Graviton. And a couple more Lashers. And there we go, the Mascot. The Mascot with a Reliant and two Reapers and Auxiliary Thrusters. And facing them is Doom Sapari with our first, our first pure phase fleet of the match. So we have two Dooms. Let us look at these Dooms. Now we've seen some Dooms before, so I'm just gonna reset just to make sure. All right, so these Dooms have Salamander, 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 Salamander. So this is two mediums and two small Salamanders for six Salamanders at a time, two heavy blasters, some light dual auto cannons. interesting, burst PD lasers up front, resistant flux conduits, and missile boosters. So this is gonna, this is a, this is a big ion against engines package, not to mention the mine strikes. Let's see, two of these strike dooms. We have some shades, first time in the tourney for shades, with Mixed missiles, Sabo and Swarmer, some IR pulses for constant DPS, and an antimatter blaster with hardened subsystems, caps and vents, and this comes with an EMP emitter. Let's see, two of those. Yes. Next up, some afflictors, strike afflictors, with two antimatter blasters up front, burst PD for point defense, and two ion torpedoes for that sweet disable. Hardened subsystems, max caps, and a couple vents. Let's see, one, two, three of those. And this one's different. We have Support Afflictor. Support Afflictor with Hammer Class Torpedoes, two Contender Cannons, a Burst PD Laser, Hardened Subsystem, and ah, ECCM and Nav Package. All right, one, two, three, four, five of those. Now five is enough to max out both the ECCM, ECM and Nav Relay. So their opponents are gonna be minus 10% speed and minus 10% range. All right, so we have phase ships versus the Woeful Folly. Fight. This is a large variety of ships. We will see how these Reaper armed Buffalo Mark IIs do. Oh, I'm sorry, Angry Battles. You're totally right. I spaced out. 10% increases the speed of your own ships. All right, so here are the phase, phase ships. The phase frigates are just kind of kiting around to the outside. There's that increased damage. Increased damage from the ship system. But no good targeting solution. However, ooh, lots of Sabos. Oh, here comes the mines. Mines versus Buffalo Mark IIs. Oh, mines versus Buffalo Mark IIs. But the Buffalo Mark IIs, yes, they're, oh. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, yes. Mines versus BM2s, not a fair matchup at all. Now this Griffin is, is amplified, but nothing's really around to hit it. Ooh, that's a lot of phase ships. A lot of phase ships around one small lasher.
Let's see, here are those salamanders. Ooh, but the beam PD on the longbows is going gonna, is gonna to stop it. Ooh, these lashers. These lashers are out of position. And... And nothing, really. The mines did not hit. All right, down here we have a shade and an afflictor. And there we go. Punisher has been flamed out. The Punisher has been flamed out. It is just... Oh, there's another flame out. Double antimatter blasters. This Punisher is not going to be able to survive against... Yes, there it goes. The Afflictor has killed the Punisher. On this flank, the Doom has killed the Punisher. The damage incoming on this Griffin has been boosted. Oh, and the AM Blaster from the Shade. Ooh, it's a lot of mines. A lot of mines attacking that poor little kite. There's the Ion Torpedo. Kite is too fast for Iron Torpedo, but not too fast for AM Blasters. AM Blasters get the kill. Let's see. So far, so far, just none of these ships can touch phase ships. They can just phase out of the way of the Griffin's missiles. And there's the kill from a contender cannon. The Astral... Ah, it's nearly all alone, just a couple frigates far away. Astrals have very little firepower. The longbows are basically useless against phase ships. I don't think this is going to... Oh, the Afflictor! The Afflictor got killed by a mine! I think the Afflictor just got friendly fired. Yes, this Astral just... This Astral is... Has no firepower to attack phase ships. And another Afflictor killed! I didn't see that. Was that another mine? However, even with just direct firepower, the heavy blasters on these dooms are too much, and the astral is gone. Now let's see, what's left? We have a single lasher down here. Oh, lasher has been destroyed. We have a lasher down here. Versus a support afflictor. Now the Lasher is fast enough to stop the Afflictor from getting its engines, and this has no AM blasters, so it can't spike kill it, but... A Shade is inbound, and that Shade is going to disable it. Yes, this was unfortunate. Uh, really, really, missile supports and fighter support, or, or longbows, simply can't do anything to phase ship. This was an unfortunate matchup for what could have been a very strong fleet. The phase ships are just taking their time. And here they come, slowly circling their enemy. Sabos on missile mounts are not bad against uh, phase ships. Sabos on fighters are very bad against phase ships. All right, and here we have the here we have the final. I think two of these afflictors at least were mine strikes, but that is it. The second round is over. We have no more no more matches. That is it. An hour and fifteen minutes. I hope you all enjoyed the show. We'll be having round three. Not too long. How long do we want to give people? Astralter, who is running the tournament. Big thanks to Astralter, because I don't have to do very much work. All I have to do is talk. Uh, Astralter will let us know when to get variants in. And then we'll have another round. Thank you, everyone, for dropping by. This has been a very nice time. We had some very good matches. We had some blazing fast message, mass matches and some slower matches. 
We've seen the power of SO, we've seen the power of missiles, and we've seen the power of long-range beams. Thank you very much, Supimir. So, in future rounds, we will see which of these dominant strategies manages to win against the other. All right. That is going to be the stream. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Does anyone else? I don't know. You want to see anything? Probably not. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everyone, for getting their fleets in. I will see everyone. Oh, how about we raid someone? How about we raid someone? And Because it, it's rare for Star Sector streamers to get 200 views. So let me look up the Star Sector channel in Twitch. Let's see who is streaming. Who is streaming right now? We have... We are going to go do Hunt's Live. Hunt's Live has zero viewers, and that's just not fair. So Nemo actually, Nemo actually raided here, which is absolutely great of him. I am going to raid Hunt's Live because why not? Well, let me just let me just take a look at him first. Let's see how this is looking. All right. Cool. Yeah, let's raid. Let's raid Hunts Live. I uh, gotta get to my Twitch. Slash raid. Hunts Live. All right. Good night, Paul. Have a good one. Everyone ready who's rating? Let's go. And I'm going to stop my own stream. Good night, everyone.